Hello, what is up everybody? In this video, we will be using the audio falloff node to recreate the audio visualizer from my animation nodes teaser video. So first thing we are gonna do is we are going to model our peg. Now this peg is going to be the thing that is instanced throughout our scene. So in order to do that, I'm gonna hit Shift A, Add Mesh, Cube. I'm going to hit Tab to go into edit mode. Hit G, Z, and one to align the bottom of our cube with our grid plane. Now, it's important to do this in edit mode because it leaves the object origin at zero, zero, zero. Next, we have to make this really skinny. So I'm going to hit S to go into scale mode, and then I'm going to hit Shift and Z to scale it on everything but the Z axis. So this will scale it on the X axis as well as the Y axis at the same time. So I can make this really skinny, and I'm gonna just do that multiple times. So S and then Shift Z. I'm going to make it like a needle. That should be good. Now I'm going to go over to our object tab and name this peg. Now we need to open up animation nodes. So drag up our timeline. We are going to need our timeline later. So go ahead and drag up a second window and change the bottom window to animation nodes by hitting shift F3. And as always, we're going to add in a new node tree and hit shift A and add in an object input node and go ahead and eye drop our peg. Next, we need to instance our peg. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, go to Object Instancer, connect that to our object input, and pick an arbitrary number of pegs. So I'm gonna do 1024 because I like that number. Now we need to randomly distribute our pegs. So we can do that by using a random vector node. So hit Shift A, go to Vector, and add in a random vector node. Go ahead and check the List Output box, and connect the object instancer output into the count. So that way we get a get length node and we only have to adjust one number every time we want to adjust the amount of pegs we have. Next, go ahead and hit Shift A, go to Object, Matrix Output, connect the instancer output into the matrix output input, and now we have to add in a replicate matrix. So Shift A, Matrix, Replicate, and change matrices to vectors. Go ahead and connect the random vector to the transformations input and the matrices into the matrix output. And now all we have to do is adjust the scale and we can adjust how spread out these pegs are. Except you're already probably noticing a problem. These are not only being distributed on the X and the Y axis, but they're also being randomly distributed on the Z axis as well. And we don't want that. We want them all to be on an even plane. So there's an easy fix for that. Drag over these two nodes to give us some more room and hit Shift A, go to Vector, and add in a Vector Math node and drop that right in between our random vector and our replicate matrix. Go ahead and change it to Multiply and you can see they all reset to 0, 0, 0. That is because we are multiplying the X, the Y, and the Z position all by 0 for each of the pegs and we don't want that. If we set them all to 1, you can see we're multiplying it all by 1 and it's like the node isn't even doing anything. So what we want is we want the X to be one, the Y to be one, and we want to scale the Z by zero. And now you can see they're all aligned to our plane. And if we change the scale, it is spreading them out and shrinking the distribution of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this to eight so it takes up our whole plane. Next, we need to make this taller in the center and shorter around the outsides to give it kind of a peak effect. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna drag this over Go Shift A, go to Matrix, and add in an offset matrix node. And drop it right between our replicate matrix and our matrix output. And for the control type, I'm going to select Scale. And I'm going to set the Z scale to 0.1. Now, by default, that sets them all to really small, but that's okay because once we add a fall off, it'll all be fixed. Next, I'm going to hit Shift A, go to Fall Off, and add in a point distance fall off, and connect that up. Now, if we look at this in, say, material view, you'll notice that the ones in the center are smaller and the ones in the outside are bigger. This is the opposite of what we want. And so in order to fix this, we can go to our offset matrix and select end instead of start. And now you can see we're sort of getting what we want. In order for it to take up the whole plane, we need to adjust the size and the fall off width controls. So we want to adjust the size so that the peaks just start clipping the top. Not clipping, but just barely. Something like that. And then we can adjust the fall off width to bring all the ones around it up. Something like that. Now, by default, it's using linear interpolation. However, I don't really like this. So we can hit Shift A, 
go to fall off and add in an interpolate fall off node. And I'm going to go ahead and change this to quadratic and set it to ease in instead of ease out. And now we get that nice U-shaped curve. And we can go ahead and we can change this to something even sharper like circular, but I like quadratic myself. Next, we need to make this actually react to our sound. So first we have to bake our sound. So at shift A, go to sound and add in a bake sound node. Now this node isn't going to be connected to anything, so we can just go ahead and find an empty spot over here. Now we are going to click load new sound and we are going to load in our song. Now if I hit alt A, you'll notice our sound starts playing. That is because our song has automatically been loaded into the video sequence editor. So if we wanted to say, adjust the starting position of our song, we can change any window. I'm gonna open up this window and we can change it to the video sequence editor. And you can see our song is loaded in here. So if I wanted to change the beginning part where it started, I can go view waveform drawing and turn on waveforms just to make it a little easier to see. And then I can just hit G to grab and then X and grab it over and align where I want it to start with our starting frame. There we go, got some nice vocals now. But right now it's not gonna do anything. And we can go ahead and just close that window for now. Now this node by itself isn't going to do anything. First, we need to bake the sound. That's gonna analyze it and get all the values from the peaks and troughs of the actual waveform. There are two bake buttons here. We have bake average and bake spectrum. Bake average is just gonna bake an overall average of the sound. You're gonna get a single value for that point in the song. However, bake spectrum is gonna analyze all the different frequency ranges. So you might set like the lower part, like the bass to trigger one thing, and the higher parts like the hi-hats to trigger something else. For this, we're actually going to bake both. So first I'm gonna bake average. Baking average is usually pretty quick. It only takes a number of seconds. However, bake spectrum, if we click this, can take anywhere from 10 seconds to 30 seconds to maybe even a few minutes, depending on how fast your computer is and how long the song is. So we're just gonna wait. And there we go. Now, like I said, this node is just used for storing data. So we're gonna keep that separated from the rest of our node tree. Now we actually need to implement that into our main node tree. So in order to do that, we're going to add in a sound fall off. So go ahead and drag these two nodes over, hit shift A, fall off, sound, change average to spectrum because we are gonna be using the spectrum for this part, and then change the sound source to our song. Next, I'm gonna hit shift A, go to fall off mix, Connect the interpolate fall off to the A, sound fall off to the B, and the output of that into our offset node. And now if I had Alt A, you can see it's having a pretty cool effect. However, we can experiment with these different mix fall off types. So we can try min, that looks pretty cool. We can try add, that looks pretty cool as well, but I think my favorite is Multiply. Next thing we need to do is add in our ground plane. So hit Shift A, Add Mesh Plane, go into Edit Mode, scale that by 8 to make it take up the whole ground plane, and then we are going to go over to the Material node, add in a new material, name this Ground, Oops, had caps lock on. I cannot spell today. There we go, ground. And with our ground plane and only our ground plane selected, I'm going to hit the slash key on the numpad. And that is going to isolate our ground plane so we can see it a little better. Also, make sure you are on material view. That way it'll make this part easier. Now, if you ever can't find your nodes in the node editor, go ahead and hit the home key and that'll automatically center your nodes. We are going to replace the diffuse with an emission shader. And then we are going to add two textures. We're going to add in a Veroni texture and connect the factor to the color input of our emission node and make sure instead of intensity, it's set to cells. Next, we are going to duplicate this node, 
add in a mix node, mix RGB, and with factor set to one, we are going to change this to difference. Now, this sets it perfectly to black. However, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to this bottom Veroni node and up the scale just a little bit until it starts to look like cracks. And then we can add a texture coordinate node and a mapping node. Connect generated to the mapping input and then the mapping output vector into both the Veroni textures. And now we can change the scale of both of them. So I want a lot of cracks. So I'm going to drag this way up and then adjust the bottom Veroni node to make those cracks just a little skinnier. I want them barely visible. Something like that. Now let's add some color. So drag those nodes over and between our difference and emission node, I'm going to add in a color ramp. And I can add any colors in I want here. So I'm going to add in a blue, and I'm going to add in maybe a purple. Make it kind of, I don't know, cyberpunky or something. Weird neon 80s theme. Yeah, that's, that looks good. A little lighter blue. There we go. Now, in the original video, these cracks pulsed. So in order to control this from within animation nodes, we need to add in a node that can control the brightness. So I'm going to add in another mix RGB node. Connect the color ramp to the bottom input, change the top input to black, and now this slider controls how bright these cracks are. I'm just going to go ahead and set that to zero by default, and then I'm going to go over to this menu over in the upper right of the node editor. If this isn't open, hit N to open it up, and I'm going to change this to brightness control. And I'm going to also put that in the label just so it's, we remember which one it is. Now I'm going to go over back in animation nodes, duplicate our sound falloff node, change it from spectrum to average because we also analyze the average. Make sure you also reselect the sound as the audio source. Next we need to hit shift A, go to falloff, evaluate falloff, connect that up, and then hit shift A, Material, Cycles Material Output. Select our ground material and select our brightness control node. Now we can plug the evaluate falloff into the data input. And if we hit Alt A, you can see it sort of works. We need to add a few extra controls. So we can fix this by using a map range node. So Shift A, Number, Map Range. And now if we change the input max, I think it's peaking at about 1.5 maybe. If you want to check, we can go to the evaluate falloff, hit W, viewer, and just listen to the song. And we can see how high this number goes. It's stopping at about 1.2. So it's a little laggy in this viewport, but I think it would work when we actually animate it. But it's looking pretty good. You can see it's kind of pulsing with the music. Now we're going to hit slash to get out a solo view. We are going to select our original peg and we're going to go over to the material editor. Next we are going to go ahead and add in a material to our original peg. Delete the diffuse material and add in an emission shader. A mix shader. And a transparent shader. We are going to plug the transparent into the top shader, the emission into the bottom, and then we are going to hit Shift A and add in a gradient texture. And plug in the factor of the gradient texture into the factor of the mix shader. And plug the mix shader into the surface input. Now let's set our emission to something like yellow so we can see it a little better. And you can see this is sideways. We want it, the gradient to go top to bottom and instead it's going left to right. So there's an easy fix, add in a texture coordinate node, add in a mapping node, connect those up, generate it into the mapping, vector into the gradient texture, and rotate it on the y-axis by something like 90. And now if we go into rendered view, you can see it's doing basically what we want. If we want to tweak it a little more, we can always add in a color ramp node, and change around the brightness a little bit. 
Something like that. And we are done with our original peg, so we can go ahead and select it and hit H to hide it. Next, we're gonna hit Shift A, Add Mesh Icosphere, and make sure subdivisions are set to one. And then in the Materials tab, hit New. Delete the Diffuse Shader, add an emission, set this to something like a light blue, and then go ahead and over in the Object tab, name this Particle. And do the same for the material as well. Next, move that over to Layer 2 by selecting our Icosphere, hitting M, and moving that over to the second layer. Select our Ground Plane, go over to the Particles tab, add in a new particle system, and down under Render, change Halo to Object, and go ahead and select our particle. Click the box and start typing in Particle, and it should show up. Now, if we just hit Alt-A, you see all the particles start being emitted, but then they just start falling. So we have to turn off gravity. So go down and under field weights, drag the gravity slider to zero. These particles are a little big, so under size, we're gonna change this to 0 0.01. And we are also going to go all the way up to the top and change the lifetime to something a little longer, like 100. That way, hopefully the particles get out of the camera's range before they disappear. Now, our last two steps are going to be going to go over to the World tab, change the background color to zero, hitting Shift A, Add Mesh Camera, or Add Camera, position the camera where we want it, maybe go to a point where the peaks are a little higher so we can frame it better, and then go over into the camera settings, enable limits so that way you can see where we're focused up the distance to the center of our plane and then go into rendered view and adjust the aperture radius to a size where it looks pretty cool. And if we hit F12, we have successfully recreated the audio visualizer from my animation nodes teaser. The only step I didn't cover here was adding the gradient background, but that was done later in compositing in another piece of software, so I'm not going to go over that here. That's all for this tutorial. If you learned something and enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe. Special thanks to all my supporters on Patreon. We are officially halfway to our first goal of removing ads from all of my videos. If you're not a Patreon and would like to help reach this goal and support this channel, check out my Patreon page at the end of this video or in the description below. And as always, I will see you next time.